पेज वन चैप्टर वन अ लेटर टू गॉड बाय जी एल फुअंतिस बिफोर यू रीड दे से फेथ कैन मूव माउंटेन्स बट वॉट शुड बी पुट आर फेथ इन दिस इज द क्वेश्चन दिस स्टोरी डेलीकेटली पोजेज लेंचो इज अ फार्मर हु राइट्स अ लेटर टू गॉड when his crops are ruined asking for a hundred pesos does lencho's letter reach god does god send him the money think what your answers to these questions would be and guess how the story continues before you begin to read it activity number 1 One of the cheapest ways to send money to someone is through the post office. Have you ever sent or received money in this way? Here is what you have to do. As you read the instructions, discuss with your teacher in class the meanings of these words: counter, counter clerk, appropriate, acknowledgement. counterfoil record consult a dictionary if necessary are there words corresponding to these english words in your languages inside the post office go to the counter marked money order buy a money order form or mo form by paying 50 paise to the person behind the counter fill in the appropriate boxes in the form preferably in block letters pay the counter clerk the amount of money to be sent along with the charges take back the mo acknowledgement counter foil for your record page 2 fill out the money order form given here using the clues that follow the form there is a specimen form printed out on this book it is superscribed as department of posts india money order and following this there is a space where you have to write the amount pay rupees so and so and there is a quadrangular box where you have to fill in the amount of rupees in digits then comes the space which is meant for writing the address of the person to whom this money order is sent it follows the word to so and so and his full address then there are certain boxes given which are to be filled in with the postal index number that is the pin then comes the date on which the money order is being sent and then comes the space where the sender has to put his or her signature then there is a space for official use only which is to be filled in by the clerk at the counter then he gives you back the mo acknowledgement counter foil and this mo acknowledgement counter foil is the part of the entire money order form This MO acknowledgement counterfoil denotes money order number, date on which it is sent, and the sender's name and address. Here, the counter clerk would ask you to give your name and address with full postal index number, that is the PIN. and he will also give with the seal of the post office the acknowledgement counterfoil denoting 
how much money he has received by way of money order as well as the commission date stamp would be put on the specified place and the signature of the payee is to be put at the end there is also a space for communication just in case the sender of the money order wants to communicate in very few lines and words certain things which are to be communicated to the receiver of the money order page number 3 think about who you will send the money to and how much you might want to send money for a magazine subscription or to a relative or a friend or you may fill out the form with yourself as sender and your partner as receiver use a part of your pocket money and submit the form at the nearest post office to see how it's done see how your partner enjoys getting money by post Notice that the form has three parts: the money order form, the part for official use, and the acknowledgement. What would you write in the space for communication? Now complete the following statements. Number one: In addition to the sender, the form has to be signed by the blank space. Two. The acknowledgement section of the form is sent back by the post office to the blank after the blank signs it. Number 3. The space for communication section is used for blank. 4. The form has 6 sections. The sender needs to fill out blank sections and the receiver blank the house the only one in the entire valley sat on the crest of a low hill crest here means top of a hill from this height one could see the river and the field of ripe corn dotted with flowers that always promised a good harvest the only thing the earth needed was a downpour or at least a shower throughout the morning lencho who knew his fields intimately had done nothing else but see the sky towards the northeast now we are really going to get some water woman The woman who was preparing supper replied, "Yes, God willing." The older boys were working in the field, while the smaller ones were playing near the house until the woman called to them all, "Come for dinner." It was during the meal that just as Lencho had predicted, big drops of rain began to fall. Page 4 In the northeast huge mountains of clouds could be seen approaching the air was fresh and sweet the man went out for no other reason than to have the pleasure of feeling the rain on his body and when he returned he exclaimed these aren't raindrops falling from the sky they are new coins the big drops are 10 cent pieces and the little ones are fives with a satisfied expression he regarded the field of ripe corn with its flowers draped in a curtain of rain draped here means covered with cloth but suddenly a strong wind began to blow and along with the rain very large hailstones began to fall these truly did resemble new silver coins the boys exposing themselves to the rain ran out to collect the frozen pearls it's really getting bad now 
exclaimed the man. I hope it passes quickly. It did not pass quickly. For an hour, the hail rained on the house, the garden, the hillside, the cornfield, on the whole valley. The field was white as if covered with salt. Not a leaf remained on the trees. The corn was totally destroyed. The flowers were gone from the plants. Lencho's soul was filled with sadness. When the storm had passed, he stood in the middle of the field and said to his sons, A plague of locusts would have left more than this. The hail has left nothing. This year we will have no corn. Here locusts means insects which fly in big swarms or groups and destroy crops. So I'll read out the sentence once again. When the storm had passed, he stood in the middle of the field and said to his sons, A plague of locusts would have left more than this. The hail has left nothing. This year we will have no corn. Page 5 That night was a sorrowful one. All our work for nothing. There is no one who can help us. We will all go hungry this year. Now, oral comprehension check. Number one. What did Lencho hope for? Number two. Why did Lencho say the raindrops were like new coins? Number three. How did the rain change? What happened to Lencho's fields? Number four. What were Lencho's feelings when the hail stopped? Now again they listen. But in the hearts of all who lived in that solitary house in the middle of the valley, there was a single hope, help from God. Don't be so upset, even though this seems like a total loss. Remember, no one dies of hunger. That's what they say. No one dies of hunger. All through the night, Lencho thought only of his one hope, the help of God, whose eyes, as he had been instructed, see everything, even what is deep in one's conscience. Lencho was an ox of a man, working like an animal in the fields, but still he knew how to write. Here conscience means an inner sense of right and wrong. The following Sunday, at daybreak, he began to write a letter which he himself would carry to town and place in the mail. It was nothing less than a letter to God. God, he wrote, if you don't help me, my family and I will go hungry this year. I need a hundred pesos in order to sow my field again and to live until the crop comes because the hailstorm. Here, peso means currency of several Latin American countries. He wrote, to God on the envelope, put the letter inside and still troubled, went to town. At the post office he placed his stamp on the letter and dropped it into the mailbox. One of the employees who was a postman and also helped at the post office went to his boss, laughing heartily and showed him the letter to God. Never in his career as a postman had he known that address. The postmaster, a fat, amiable, amiable here means friendly and pleasant. The postmaster, a fat, amiable fellow, also broke out laughing. Page 6 But almost immediately, 
he turned serious and tapping the letter on his desk commented what faith i wish i had the faith of the man who wrote this letter starting up a correspondence with god so in order not to shake the writer's faith in god the postmaster came up with an idea answered the letter but when he opened it it was evident that to answer it he needed something more than goodwill ink and paper but he stuck to his resolution he asked for money from his employees he himself gave part of his salary and several friends of his were obliged to give something for an act of charity it was impossible for him to gather together the 100 pesos so he was able to send the farmer only a little more than half he put the money in an envelope addressed to lencho and with it a letter containing only a single word as a signature god now oral comprehension check number 1 who or what did lencho have faith in what did he do number 2 who read the letter number 3 what did the postmaster do then now further the lesson the following sunday lencho came a bit earlier than usual to ask if there was a letter for him it was the postman himself who handed the letter to him while the postmaster experiencing the contentment of a man who has performed a good deed looked on from his office here contentment means satisfaction lencho showed not the slightest surprise on seeing the money such was his confidence but he became angry when he counted the money god could not have made a mistake nor could he have denied lencho what he had requested immediately lencho went up to the window to ask for paper and ink on the public writing table he started to write with much wrinkling on his brow caused by the effort he had to make to express his ideas when he finished he went to the window to buy a stamp which he licked and then affixed to the envelope with a blow of his fist page 7 the moment the letter fell into the mailbox the postmaster went to open it it said god of the money that i asked for only 70 pesos reached to me send me the rest since i need it very much but don't send it to me through the mail because the post office employees are a bunch of crooks lencho now the oral comprehension check number 1 was lencho surprised to find a letter for him with money in it number 2 what made him angry thinking about the text number 1 who does lencho have complete faith in which sentences in the story tell you this number 2 why does the postmaster send money to lencho Why does he sign the letter God? Number 3. Did Lencho try to find out who had sent the money to him? Why or why not? Number 4. Who does Lencho think has taken the rest of the money? What is the irony in the situation? Remember that the irony of a situation is an unexpected aspect of it. an ironic situation is strange or amusing because it is the opposite of what is expected page 8 number 5 are there people like lencho in the real world what kind of a person would you say he is you may select appropriate words from the box to answer the question 
the words are greedy naive stupid ungrateful selfish comical unquestioning 6 there are two kinds of conflict in the story between humans and nature and between humans themselves how are these conflicts illustrated now thinking about language number 1 look at the following sentence from the story suddenly a strong wind began to blow and along with the rain very large hailstones began to fall hailstones are small balls of ice that fall like rain a storm in which hailstones fall is a hailstorm you know that a storm is bad weather with strong winds rain thunder and lightning there are different names in different parts of the world for storms depending on their nature can you match the names in the box with their descriptions below and fill in the blanks you may use a dictionary to help you the words are gale whirlwind cyclone hurricane tornado typhoon here are certain sentences which test your knowledge of the words which are just now given to you you have to fill in the blank spaces with the spellings of the right words number 1 a violent tropical storm in which strong winds move in a circle you have to fill in two blank spaces then c then four blank spaces each blank space is to be filled in with an alphabet to make the right word number 2 an extremely strong wind one blank then a then two blanks number 3 a violent tropical storm with very strong winds two blanks then p then four blanks number 4 a violent storm whose center is a cloud in the shape of a funnel three blanks then n then again three blanks number 5 a violent storm with very strong winds especially in the western atlantic ocean two blanks then r then six blanks number 6 a very strong wind that moves very fast in a spinning movement and causes a lot of damage four blanks followed by l then again four blanks now the second exercise notice how the word hope is used in these sentences from the story a i hope i hope it a i hope it the hailstorm passes quickly b there was a single hope help from god in the first example hope is a verb which means you wish for something to happen in the second example it is a noun meaning a chance for something to happen page 9 now match the sentences in column a with the meanings of hope in column b first column a number 1 will you get the subjects you want to study in college i hope so number 2 i hope you don't mind my saying this but i don't like the way you are arguing number 3 this discovery will give new hope to hiv aids sufferers number 4 we were hoping against hope that the judges would not notice our mistakes 
Number five, I called early in the hope of speaking to her before she went to school. Number six, when everybody had given up hope, the fishermen came back seven days after the cyclone. Now the sentences to be matched with the sentences in the column A, which we have just now read. Now the sentences in column B. A feeling that something good will probably happen. The next, thinking that this would happen, it may or may not have happened. Next sentence, stopped believing. that this good thing would happen next sentence wanting something to happen and thinking it quite possible next sentence showing concern that what you say should not offend or disturb the other person a way of being polite and the next sentence wishing for something to happen although this is very unlikely now the relative clauses look at these sentences a all morning lencho who knew his fields intimately looked at the sky b the woman who was preparing supper replied yes god willing the italicized parts of the sentences give us more information about lencho and the woman we call them relative clauses notice that they begin with a relative pronoun who other common relative pronouns are whom whose and which the relative clauses in a and b are called non defining because we already know the identity of the person they describe lencho is a particular person and there is a particular woman he speaks to we don't need the information in the relative clause to pick these people out from a larger set a non defining relative clause usually has a comma in front of it and a comma after it some writers use a dash instead as in the story if the relative clause comes at the end we just put a full stop join the sentences given here after using who whom whose which as suggested number 1 i often go to mumbai mumbai is the commercial capital of india to join these two sentences you have to use the word which number 2 my mother is going to host a tv show on cooking she cooks very well you have to join these two sentences with the word who page 10 number 3 these sports persons are going to meet the president their performance has been excellent you have to join these two sentences with the word whose number 4 lencho prayed to god his eyes see into our minds use the word whose Number 5 This man cheated me I trusted him Use the word whom to join these two sentences Sometimes the relative pronoun in a relative clause remains hidden For example look at the first sentence of the story A The house the only one in the entire valley sat on the crest of a low hill we can rewrite this sentence as b the house which was the only one in the entire valley sat on the crest of a low hill in a the relative pronoun which and the verb was are not present number 4 using negatives for emphasis we know that sentences with words such as no not or nothing show the absence of something or contradict something for example a this year we will have no corn corn will be absent 
B. The hail has left nothing. That means absence of a crop. Number C. These aren't raindrops falling from the sky. They are new coins. This contradicts the common idea of what the drops of water falling from the sky are. But sometimes negative words are used just to emphasize an idea. Look at these sentences from the story. D. Lencho had done nothing else but see the sky towards the northeast. That means he had done only this. E. The man went out for no other reason than to have the pleasure of feeling the rain on his body. That means he had only this reason. F. Lencho showed not the slightest surprise on seeing the money. That means he showed no surprise at all. Now look back at example C. Notice that the contradiction in fact serves to emphasize the value or usefulness of the rain to the farmer. Find sentences in the story with negative words which express the following ideas emphatically. Number 1. The trees lost all their leaves. Number 2. The letter was addressed to God himself. Number 3. The postman saw this address for the first time in his career. Page 11. 5. Metaphors. The word metaphor comes from a Greek word meaning transfer. Metaphors compare two things or ideas. A quality or feature of one thing is transferred to another thing. Some common metaphors are the leg of the table. The leg supports our body. So the object that supports a table is described as a leg. Next point, the heart of the city. The heart is an important organ in the center of our body. So this word is used to describe the central area of a city. In pairs, find metaphors from the story to complete the table given hereafter. Try to say what qualities are being compared. One has been done for you. Object is cloud. Metaphor, huge mountains of clouds. Quality or feature compared is the mass or hugeness of mountains. Now some more objects. You have to give the metaphor and also the quality or feature compared. The words are raindrops, hailstones, locusts. And there is a metaphor, an ox of a man. You have to give the object and also the quality or feature as compared. And there is a quality or feature compared also given. An epidemic, a disease that spreads very rapidly and leaves many people dead. Now from this quality or feature compared, you have to give the metaphor as well as the object. Now a test for speaking. Have you ever been in great difficulty and felt that only a miracle could help you? How was your problem solved? Speak about this in class with your teacher. Page 12 Now for the listening practice. Listen to the letter given hereafter in this lesson read out by your teacher on the audio CD. As you listen, fill in the table given hereafter. The writer apologizes, says sorry because the blank space. The writer has sent this to the reader blank space. The writer sent it in the month of Blank space. The reason for not writing earlier. Blank space. Sarah goes to. Blank space. Who is writing to whom? Blank space for your answer. 
where and when were they last together another blank space for your answer in this lesson what we have done point 1 introduced students to the story that they are going to read point number 2 related a thought provoking story about the nature of belief point number 3 helped students through an interesting activity to understand something that happens in the story how to send money using a money order point number 4 guided them through the reading activity by providing periodic comprehension checks as they read and checked for holistic understanding at the end of the reading activity number 5 provided interesting exercises to strengthen students grasp of the specific vocabulary found in the story and also introduced them to related vocabulary number 6 explained specific areas of grammar non defining relative clauses and the use of negatives for emphasis providing illustrations from the text and exercises for practice next point explained what metaphors are and helped students identify metaphors in the text by providing clues next point provided a context for authentic speaking next point provided an interesting listening activity given here is the passage for listening activity Page thirteen. Bhat House, two five six, Circuit Road, Kanpur, Uttar Pradesh, India. The twenty fifth of January, two thousand and six. Dear Arati, how are you? I'm sorry, I haven't written for a very long time. I think I last sent you a birthday card in the month of September 2005. We have just moved house. See our new address above. This is our new home. Sara has just about started going to school. We have admitted her to little feet as this is very close to our new home. I am sitting here by the window sill writing to you. There is a slight drizzle outside and I am reminded of the good times we had together at Bangalore last year. Do write back. Love. Jaya. Now what you can do. Before you read, encourage students to share their ideas about what will happen in the story. Now activity. Before filling out the form, get the students to read through the form and decide which parts they should fill out and which parts will be filled in by the postal department ask a few students to volunteer to actually send a money order the amount need not be large and share the experience with the rest of the class reading break the text up into manageable chunks for reading three paragraphs for example and encourage students to read silently on their own give them enough time to read and then discuss what they have read before going on to the next portion use the oral comprehension checks in the appropriate places and use the thinking about the text questions at the end of the passage to help them go beyond the text grammar after they have done the exercise ask students to make their own sentences with non defining relative clauses for example meena who is a very clever girl is always first in class or our gardener who knows a lot about plants loves to talk about them speaking take the first turn talk to the students about an instance from your own life or from that of someone you know 
पेज फोर्टीन डस्ट ऑफ स्नो दिस इज अ पोएम द वे अ क्रो शुक डाउन ऑन मी द डस्ट ऑफ स्नो फ्रॉम अ हेमलॉक ट्री हैज गिवन माई हार्ट अ चेंज ऑफ मूड एंड सेव्ड सम पार्ट ऑफ अ डे आई हैड रूड दिस इज अ पोएम बाय रॉबर्ट फ्रॉस्ट glossary hemlock it means a poisonous plant or tree with small white flowers rude it means held in regret thinking about the poem this poem presents a moment that seems simple but has a larger significance compare this with other quotation from robert frost always always a larger significance a little thing touches a larger thing number 1 what is a dust of snow what does the poet say has changed his mood how has the poet's mood changed number 2 how does frost present nature in this poem the following questions may help you to think of an answer number 1 what are the birds that are usually named in poems do you think a crow is often mentioned in poems what images come to your mind when you think of a crow number 4 again what is a hemlock tree why doesn't the poet write about a more beautiful tree such as a maple or an oak or a pine number 3 what do the crow and hemlock represent joy or sorrow what does the dust of snow that the crow shakes off a hemlock tree stand for number 3 have there been times when you felt depressed or hopeless have you experienced a similar moment that changed your mood that day page 15 poem fire and ice this poem is again by robert frost fire and ice some say the world will end in fire some say in ice from what i have tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire but if it had to perish twice i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice glossary perish means die suffice means to be sufficient thinking about the poem number 1 there are many ideas about how the world will end do you think the world will end some day have you ever thought what would happen if the sun got so hot that it burst or grew colder and colder number 2 for frost what do fire and ice stand for Here are some ideas greed avarice cruelty lust conflict fury intolerance rigidity insensitivity coldness indifference or hatred number 3 what is the rhyme scheme of the poem how does it help in bringing out the contrasting ideas in the poem page 15 poem fire and ice this poem is again by robert frost fire and ice some say the world will end in fire some say in ice 
from what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice. Glossary Perish means die. Suffice means to be sufficient. Thinking about the poem, number one, there are many ideas about how the world will end. Do you think the world will end someday? Have you ever thought what would happen if the sun got so hot that it burst or grew colder and colder? Number two, for frost, what do fire and ice stand for? Here are some ideas. Greed, avarice, cruelty, lust, conflict, fury, intolerance, rigidity, insensitivity, coldness, indifference or hatred. Number three. What is the rhyme scheme of the poem? How does it help in bringing out the contrasting ideas in the poem?